This is the Rebel Stoke hydroelectric dam in British Columbia, Canada. 2.8 gigawatts capacity. Over a year, it produces 7,800 gigawatt hours. That's enough for 8 million homes in North America. Just over there, there's 5.2 billion cubic meters of water to power it. It's massive. Mm. That is mighty fine coffee. Now, we get very, very excited on the Fully Charged Show about new technologies, new forms of generating and storing electricity without burning anything. And that's fantastic, and there's nothing wrong with that. But every now and then I just think we should also look at stuff that we've been doing for years, decades, if not hundreds of years, really old technologies that generate power but don't burn anything. And obviously the, the really big one is hydroelectric power, and that's what we've come to see here today. Now, I am sitting in a lovely cafe in the beautiful mountain town of Revelstoke in British Columbia, Canada. And we're about a few hundred miles east of Vancouver, and we're actually on the main rail line. This town was built around the railways. When they built the railway across Canada a long time ago, it, this is where this town is, an old rail town. It's now real tourist resorts, particularly in the winter, loads of skiing and lots of that. There's some, there's some gentlemen with interesting beards who live here. I saw one last night, it was like, you could, it was like a carpet growing out of his chin. Amazing. But we've come here to see a big hydroelectric dam, a really big one. I mean, huge. It's really exciting. And I want to learn a little bit more about hydroelectric uh, generation because I only know one thing, and that is one cubic meter of water dropping one meter downwards produces one kilowatt of electricity. I think they've got quite a few million cubic feet of water to play with here in Revelstoke. It is really hard to, to describe the scale of what I'm seeing here. This is just so gargantuan. It is enormous. And even though the basic technology of letting water fall down a hill and turn a turbine, that's basically really simple. To build it on a scale like this boggles the mind. It really does. With our five generators, Revelstoke has the ability to produce 2,480 megawatts of energy. So for electrical buffs out there, this is around 8,000 gigawatt hours per year and amounts to about 15% of the total energy that BC Hydro produces provincially. Right. The simple fact is there's water up there, it drops down pipes there, it spins turbines which turn generators and that's kind of it. I mean, in, in its essential terms, it's very simple. Okay, so this unit's offline. It looks like we're just on unit four right now. Right. Or unit five, but we'll go into that's, unit... I know, hey? The size of it. Oh, my God. So that's... So the, the water that's going through there then has been through the the turbine, yep. and that's now going out into the river? No, no, this is still coming off of the penstock. So this is just before it goes into just the scroll case. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. The size of it when you're in... It's mind-boggling. I know, right? <laughs> yeah, and so we have the, the shift ring in here, basically, which allows for, you know, there's thermal expansion and contraction. Right, of course, yeah, right? I suppose so, yeah. yeah. Wow. I mean, it's, it's not dripping very much when you think no. about and I, I, Presumably the pressure of the water in there is huge. Yes, it is. And so this location here is the penstock drain valve, which right. is essentially when we're isolating the unit and we've shut the intake gate, this is where we're running the water out of that right. penstock so everything's draining for worker safety, basically. Yeah. Wow. 
What's a, a really spectacular is when it comes out of the bottom. And I'm fascinated by that. So what you've got to do with that water that's... Just remember, these are penstocks, the tubes. Correct. So the water going down, the, the pressure at the bottom of that must be mind-boggling. Mm -hmm. But then you're taking a huge amount of that energy out. That's what I find fascinating. You're extracting that energy, if you like, and turning it into, into electricity. Yeah. And then, because then you don't want it, because you know, what you would expect is you've got this immense force, like even like a garden hose times a million, it's going to be squirting out at the bottom, but it isn't, it's just sort of bubbling out at the bottom. So you've taken all that en energy out, is that how it works? Is it because it's turning those turbines that it's kind of slowed the water down? You're right, it is controlled by moving that massive unit and turning it to create electricity, right. essentially. So this year we had a lot of record high snowfalls throughout our province and so we have a lot of uh, snow packed which we're able to obviously in turn generate into storage for our facilities. Right. So that's so like up high in the mountains, loads of snow, that melts in the spring. But I mean that, because uh, is that, is the lake here, is that fairly full at the moment? So it is relatively full at right. this time of year. Um, we have another dam upstream from us, which controls the water levels as well. So we have inflows coming from the mountains around us, as well as the water flow being controlled from mica, which is upstream. Right. But then can you turn it on and off? Because you, can you fluctuate how much power you're sending into the grid, say, to, to balance in with, with other renewables? Well, that's the nice thing about the versatility of hydroelectric generation is that our headwaters essentially act as a giant storage battery. Right. And so we have the ability to increase and decrease load based on customer demand. So it also gives us that versatility to be able to bring in other renewables such as wind or solar into the electrical grid. Robert, these are the the governors that I was talking about. All right. And so, like I said, they're big hydraulic. So that's hydraulic fluid, isn't so it? So this is hydraulic fluid in here. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Huge. And so basically, there are accumulator tanks that are maintaining that pressure. Right. And as we go into the unit, you'll see, we'll be able to look into one of the turbine pits, and you can see the massive wicked gate arms. Right. Yes. That the wow. governors control, and that's controlling the amount of water that's flowing into the units. So you can, can you actually turn them up and down then? So yeah. you generate you generate less or more. That's right. Yeah. Right, right. So it sounds like unit two is running now. So where I'm about to go now is very, very loud. So I'm going to put these in ear protectors because it's like proper loud. The, the impact that a, a facility like this has on the local environment is obviously a big concern for everyone. Yeah, for sure. And so we do realize the impact of having a hydroelectric generating facility on a major body of water such as the Columbia. And there's positives and negatives to hydroelectric generation. And so our responsibility is to mitigate and making sure that we're doing everything we can to control the risks to the impact of our environment. So this involves any of the projects going forward as well as the existing infrastructure, making sure that we have plans built into our development to make sure that we're taking care of our environment for future generations. What's your relation like, relationship like as a company with, with, with First Nations? Yeah, so I think that obviously, you know, we're going through a lot of change and understanding and there's a lot of things that we as an organization would have done differently than we did 40 and 50 years ago when we built these large facilities, especially around our consultation and impacts to the Indigenous communities in the areas. So, 
you know, we recognize the mistakes that we've made in the past and it's a big focus for our organization to work on rebuilding those relationships and just working on that reconciliation piece. Um, and, you know, I know it's a long road, but I feel confident that we're heading in the right direction. Yeah, you can really see it's harder to see when you're down, down underneath quite where everything is, but it's very obvious up here. Yeah, and so that's like, so once we're coming off of the unit with the 16 kV, you saw the three phases, they go in that 90, right. and this is where it comes up, and then out into the transformer gallery wow. right now. Because yeah. once you, you sort of get a picture of it, it is very, I mean, I don't, want, I, I don't mean to denigrate it by saying basic, but it's fairly like it's there, that's it, it's massive, it has to go up there and out there. You know? well, I always tell people when they come and start working here, especially, it's like, don't be intimidated by the scale. Yeah. It's very simplistic yes. technology yeah. in a lot of ways. Yeah. Right? So uh, the, the crane housing up there reminds me of it um, at a big container port. Oh, we yeah. went up one of those big containers, oh, and I didn't think I got vertigo until we went okay. at that thing. Oh my god. Oh, terrifying. like at a shipping port? Yeah, yeah. yeah okay, huge, cool. huge shipping port, yeah. So one of the other things then is how long this will last, because it's been, it kind of become part of the environment now. Is there a sort of lifespan for a dam? Hydroelectric facilities have the ability to work a uh, hundred years and longer right and the role that we play in that is making sure that we're maintaining our assets and ensuring that reliability so making sure that we're staying current you know no pun intended but yeah. staying current with uh, our modernization of our equipment and making sure that our maintenance programs are in place so that we have that longevity so that we can ensure that we deliver clean efficient power for the residents of British Columbia right. So are there kind of next steps that you're going to go on to improve what the, the facilities you have here? Our importance in this facility is just making sure that we're maintaining our existing infrastructure and that means at the facility and in the surrounding areas. As the energy and load demand increases in the province, we'll do an assessment of when we install our sixth unit, which we have capacity. Right. So you've got five at the moment, but you've actually got the structure here to, to have six. That's correct, right. yeah. And that, I'm presuming and that is quite a big investment and quite a big job to, to build a, so you've got to build a, put in a new turbine a new generator and all the peripheral structures to make that work yeah for sure and so the facility was future proofed right. so in 2011 we did install our fifth generator to just keep up with provincial load demand and now we do have the capacity that the hole is there so to speak right. in the powerhouse and we just have to fill everything in and, and put it into place so Jesse, you've got to help me a bit here. So we've seen this incredible engineering achievement, the, the enormity of everything, the noise of everything. And actually all it is doing is producing what we're standing next to here, which is the, this is basically the quietest room I've been in since we've been in the building. And that is 500 kV. Can you explain to uh, someone like me what that really means? Yeah, so our domestic homes run off of 240, 120 volts. Right. And so we're at 500,000 volts. That's what's in there, it's yeah. 500,000 volts. Yeah. That is, that's a lot. <laughs> so, my goodness, that's, and then what I love is the, the six tubes going through the wall there, that is, it, that is the electricity going out into the world. from right. so, yeah. so all this enormous engineering, actually, I mean, that is big stuff, but it's in comparison with everything else we've seen, that's quite dainty. Yeah, yeah. exactly, and just the comparison to scale, yeah. right? Yeah. What it takes to produce that. Yes, yeah. yeah. But then, you know, it does, it's a lot of power for millions of houses, you know. For that's sure. The, so it is, it is an extraordinary achievement. Yeah. And also, I'm really liking the idea of how long it lasts. I think that's a really important aspect is that it isn't put up, you know, like a wind turbine, 25, 30 years, solar panels, about the same, you know, gas power stations. It's not, it's like 50, 60 years and they really are falling to bits. This, you're talking a long time for this installation. I mean, it's, well, how old is it now? It's 50, that's getting right. on for 50 years already. Yeah. And it's, it doesn't look that old to me. There's one or two boxes of switches from the old, the old stuff looks a bit older, but it looks amazing. You're yeah. looking after it well. Exactly, right? yeah, and that's the importance of yeah. the job. Right? Yeah. yeah.
Now, although this is really renewable power, it's not without an impact. I mean, there is tons of steel and concrete to build this dam, but it works out over its lifetime to be a fraction of coal. In fact, it's about 3% of the CO2 per kilowatt hour of a coal burning power plant. It's almost nothing. It's pretty impressive, isn't it, really, when you think about it? And it's very much down to the environment that it's in. I mean, we are in this huge valley in this incredible mountainous region of British Columbia. There's a vast river that goes through this valley. They built this dam. That catches the water, takes the energy out of it, puts it back in the river. There's no fuel used. There's no trucks coming up here full of diesel. It just runs. There's no CO2. It runs 24 hours a day. It can be turned on and off at will. You know, it is the most amazing facility that, that to the BC Hydro have here. It's incredible. Really want to thank them for letting us come and have a look at it. It's been an extraordinary experience. And yes, of course, there's negative aspects to anything we do, but you know, to, to hydroelectric, you know, it, we're flooding huge valleys. But on the whole, I think it's a, a positive benefit and it really fits in with all the aspects of the energy generation scene that we're trying to, we're trying to encourage to happen. Huge amount of electricity. Anyway, that's it. Please do subscribe to this channel and tell your mates about it because you get to see amazing things like this, which is just incredible. Uh, have a look at the Patreon link if you've got a moment. But that's it from here in British Columbia, eh? Uh, as always, if you have been, thank you for watching.